Hi, friends, and welcome back to episode five of our Ballad of, Ballad of Conjurer series here on Girls Run These Worlds. My name is Valdrian, the Roserade on the internet. I'm a she, they, it kind of person. Um, and yeah, we're here. We're queer. We're going to play some 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 jrpg goodness which is uh i have barely been following the system and just been really excited like telling stories with y'all <laughs> so but yeah, i i promise we we do roll dice at least once a session <laughs> like, um uh that being said just kind of as a reminder that we are doing a giveaway so there's some exclamation um there is a command somewhere going around uh to where you can enter to win and we'll do a drawing for two copies of um of the of the system at the end of the session but anyway that's me um let's go ahead and go around and let everyone uh introduce themselves and their characters um and tell me your character's theme song um of this of this game because that is uh that's important because it is called the ballad of conjurers <laughs> um, and uh we're gonna start with gas Hello, my name is Gaskinator. I use she her pronouns and I'm playing Brazen, our um our our empty headed little werewolf, uh who uses she they pronouns. And um with Brazen and just in life in general, I usually go first thought, best thought. And uh I was thinking of Brave, you know the song from Brave Touch the Sky, where it's just like it's just talking about how you love running in nature and stuff. And I feel like that's a big brazen vibe. Just like, yeah, trees. <laughs> I, I also feel like brazen when I'm in the forest. She's like, oh man, trees. <laughs> like, it's a mm -hmm. good feeling. Trees are awesome. Right. Yeah, so it's just a song about loving nature. And I feel like that's a brazen thing. So, mm -hmm. mm. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Amar Hamalu on the internet. Uh, I am here bringing to you Rowan, uh, who uses any and all pronouns. I use she, they pronouns. Um, Rowan is our little uh, fey being. Um, and they, I would say, I, I can't go for anything that isn't the Cocteau Twins because you can't tell me Elizabeth Fraser is not from the Fey Realm herself. Um, but I actually would put up the song. Uh, it's called Song to the Siren. Um, she did an act uh, called This Mortal Coil. And I just feel like This Mortal Coil also feels very fitting with what we're doing right now. Um, uh -huh. But it is a is a beautiful song. That's me. It's my boy. Sorry, my cat opened the door. <laughs> like, uh, Angie, you're up. Okay. Hello there, lovely beans and fantastic listeners. My name is Angela Lemos Mogreja. I use she, her pronouns, and I'll be playing Leah, who is your resident Phoenix, newly reborn kaiju deity? Question mark. Uh, Emma, you don't have to start flirting with me just yet. <laughs> <laughs> that part comes later. I was later. Say uh, being, baby. Okay, I am. <laughs> but um, I would say theme song is, it's an odd pick, but I think it's appropriate. It is the host of Seraphim, which is from an album, I think it's called The Serpent's Egg by Dead Can Dance that I originally heard from the adaptation of the, Steve, uh, the Stephen King movie adaptation of The Mist. It plays basically when they're going through town looking at the horrifying results of that movie's events and it is unnerving powerful and oddly beautiful and I feel like that kind of describes Leah in a nutshell though she would never use those words to describe herself it, it is both cosmic horror and a kaiju film if I'm not mistaken <laughs> like... <laughs> yes actually it is both those things at the same time very so fitting yeah <laughs> that's me cool Ren you're up Oh, hey, that's me. Hi, my name is Ren. I am your friendly resident neighborhood agender TTRPG performer. I use they, them pronouns. I am playing Autumn, the autumn, wow, autumn named otter person. <laughs> uh, they also use they, them pronouns. And I was thinking about this question, what my theme song would be, and I am bad at character playlists and et cetera, et cetera, in general, but, but I just wanted to go with like a classic rock kind of vibe and i feel like autumn would uh vibe well with peaceful easy feeling from the eagles and just uh you know be that ground and presence and do your best just kind of keep it going 
All right, so I'm Fairy Zarina. Um, both me and Breathe character I'm playing are uh, non-binary. We both use any and all pronouns. And um, I don't know why you have to pick such hard questions sometimes. Well, I really don't. Um, but um, under the, the tiny time constraints that I had, I have decided that Lollipop by Mika would probably be Breeze's nice. um, theme song. Because it's like super happy and cutesy, but also kind of dark. So, cool, 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 cool. Well, then, uh, with that in mind, I I think we'll go ahead and get started. And apologies to everyone. Like, I'm a little foggy today because um, like my medication that I took last night sometimes takes like two days to get out of your system. Uh, so I'm I'm pretty chill today. Um, but we will we will get on. So last time um the group with the exception of autumn and we'll find out why in a second uh went to see the world tree um together they had to go through a very whimsical ley lined adventure and uh wake up at the base of the tree or at least the old tree's trunk as they climbed flew fluttered all the way to the top uh, what they saw was it was in fact a stump, um, but with a sapling growing out of it. Uh, but also on the stump, there was uh, the angel Raziel, the angel of knowledge, who was not like murdered, but definitely defeated, uh, lying down with the faceless god Atu sitting upon him. This god, uh, you would later find out, or at the very least, um, Rowan is like Rowan's sugar daddy in a way. Uh, Rowan definitely fucked this god at some point. Um, and you later later on learned they were the um, the elder core that is known as uh, Nyarlathotep, whichever one it's called, which is just, just, just pure chaos. <laughs> um, and the, so a two with the book in his hand scratched out Sandifon's name from the leisure uh, that the little assassin that was traveling with you um, out of the book. And it sort of turned her off for a second, like, and then wrote four other names inside of it. And she killed all of you very quickly and very brutally. Um, only for you all to wake up in, wake up where your conscious was floating somewhere in the cosmos between life and death. Um, Y'all had your very own individual scenes where you all heard, with the exception of Angie, the cry of a bird, and you reached forward into twilight, took its hand, and were being pulled out. That being said, we're gonna backtrack into the uh into present time uh where autumn you have just watched your friends walk into this giant crystal portal um one by one and you sort of were hanging back for a second and before you can make that decision to go forward that black dog from before with the golden eyes this um this avatar of the angel of death that um bitch <laughs> <laughs> made me run into a wall <laughs> um sort of appears out of like the shadows like some sort of ninja and um gets between you entering this ley line in between you entering this ley line. Um, it doesn't um, growl or does it seem aggressive, but it's it does that thing that dogs do when it just lowers its head slightly and what do you do? Well, with this dog in between me and the portal, uh, first thing I'll do is instinctively stop, look at it, maybe tilt my head a little bit, and then 
put my hands out and just go, chew, go, get out of the way. And just... maybe start walking back forwards towards the portal slowly. It it doesn't move. It does, it's it's it stands its ground. Um, and you see that crystal flicker out. Um, and the time to travel has has ended. Chicken nuggets. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Nick Nick presented me with food. <laughs> so, um, and when that kind of flickers out, the dog um, moves to the side from this crystal and, and sits. Well, I'll look at the dog and say, well, well, now I missed my window. What the? And I'll turn and look for the wizard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're in a chamber um, that a lot of these crystals have been placed and, you know, their, their ley lines um, to various places. Um, and the wizard, uh, Yulesh, the, the snake man uh is it's his cleaning up the mess with some unseen servants like you just see like objects move it's a mess but like like your presence that was there like is just moving it about um and he's like at sort of like his table and you see like all of these um the the swabs that you all took with the exception of Angela, he's, he's, you know, getting them ready in, like, smaller, like, encompassed tubes sort of thing. Getting your, your clones ready, so to speak, to, to put into the, the big ones. I will turn a look at Yolesh and say, hey, Oi. The, the portal closed and your dog's in the way. My dog. I, I don't. I don't have a dog. I, I don't. You're at the dog. What? This it's isn't gone. your dog. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> yeah. It ninja it away. It's like well, I don't know what you mean. I mean, hmm. I could just I could just send you. I have to get that Boston accent. Hold. On. I can't. I can't mask a Bostonian right now. What's your oh. What's your activation phrase? I don't know. It's like, hold on, I gotta get my mark. My car. My car. <laughs> my car. Or it's like, how's your mama? Or just get my marky mark going. Like, um, but you know, he's very confused because he doesn't have a dog. And he's like, what, what do you mean you missed it? I don't understand. How did you how did you like it it, it turned off? Did did you give it enough juice? I don't give it juice. You gotta say the address, and then there's like, you know, a Tom. Oh, I won't worry about it. They'll be back soon. Oh, but... here you want to help? And he likes. <laughs> Gives me a tube or something. Yeah, he's like, okay, okay, okay. Just uh, hold on a second. He like gives you like a pair of of gloves and it's like you don't want to touch your own you don't want to contaminate the samples mm. okay are they um are they special otter gloves yes they're special otter gloves oh. you just poof them into the air for you of course <laughs> he he's did. a wizard <laughs> Yeah, I have a character question. If you mixed up all our cheek swab DNA together and put it in one tube, would it be like a the fly situation? You all just come out as Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Not even a fly, <laughs> just specifically yeah. Jeff Goldblum. Honestly, that between all the four of you, that makes sense. <laughs> like, we become a being of raw sexual energy. Mm -hmm. Jeff <laughs> no. Um, and so as y'all are kind of like piddling around and he's giving you these instructions how to move stuff and put them and y'all put them in, in like in a solution, um, 
like the whole like just just dip it in there like he even does like this weird like water manipulation where he just sort of like takes the saliva off of the almost like water bending and like puts it in there sort of thing he's like i could teach you how to do that at some point don't worry you know and uh, that was my cajun accent that was in boston um surprisingly yat out of new orleans is very similar to a boston accent but anyway saliva bending yes um but um you you do notice that and both of you notice kind of like once these are set together um three of them there's like a slight glow in the fluid my face will drop and i'll just say oh well what's it doing is it supposed to do that uh oh uh oh what uh and it's sort of like around that time the chamber of like the ley line room um sort of swings open and Sias is standing there almost with this disassociative like expression on her face um, and she is holding something in her hand, um, which is not clean. Her hands, that is. Okay. What? Say What? Where? Where is everybody? You went uh, with them. Where are they? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Just, I, I know this look. I'm gonna go get her, go get her boyfriend upstairs, please. He's cleaning up the tubes upstairs in, in Wait, the lab. Right mm -hmm. now? Yes, please, 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 please. Do, do not touch her. Okay, don't have to tell me that twice and or even once really. And then I will walk up the stairs to go find the moppist. <laughs> the custodian. Um so like um so yeah, in the the room, the the broken glass and everything is all pretty cleaned up. Um and you see this man in his 30s, um blonde hair. A uh, little scruff on his beard, looking like your friend Gray. This is the first time you've seen him. Um, and he looks and he's like, oh. Uh, hey, what's uh, what's going on? Hi, I was mm -hmm. told to come fetch you. Okay. Yeah. I you, didn't know you're... otters played fetch. Oh yeah, all the time. Oh, we'll have one of to... our favorite favorite family activities. And he, you know, he nods and he sort of like goes past you and you see him look over, like the because he's on the second floor and y'all were on the ground floor and you see him sort of like look over the railing to see what's what's going on, and like immediately like turns into his hybrid form and leaps over the ledge to go tend to this ghost the shell of a person for the moment um and you know if you kind of follow to the ledge and you watch he can touch her and he just sort of like lifts up like her elbow that she's holding something and he pulls out three um like again like tubes of of ash and she looks at him and she goes in very monotone very squeaky it should speed up the process it's from the phoenix and he takes her away in, into like a room you don't know and Yulish is standing there he is the, the tubes of ash now and looks up at you. Sorful. 
what what did what did she say? Those were from the, the phoenix. They went to see the tree. Not a phoenix, but I know that someone who was a phoenix went with them. So, what's going on here? Uh, sorry, kiddo. So, but they sorry. were apparently on the list. So, um, they're dead. Excuse me? Um, they're definitely dead. What, what What happened? What happened? I... I don't know. I wasn't there. But... And, like, he opens his palms and he's like, Phoenix Ashes can speed up the process of the clones growing. Their souls are already there. It's just a matter of their bodies being there now. I don't want to jump to any conclusions. But only one person came back. Yeah. She had something to do with it, didn't she? The only time I've ever seen my friend with that look and that expression is in the moments where she has lost her autonomy. So her weapon was utilized by someone or something and they used her to to kill your friends i'm going to sit and stew on that for a moment and there is a quiet tenseness about Autumn right now. The point that they are making mental note of where their, uh, their glaive is at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll just say um, well what do we do well we get these and he motions to the three that are glowing and you you know they're labeled even with your friend's names on it and one of them has your label on it not glowing because your soul is in your body um and is like we get to work i'll need your help okay i'm gonna need the phoenix ashes will replicate the bodies faster but i'm still going to need other ingredients including a very the powder from a very very rare stone stone powder yes um and he gives you a fantasy name version stone um <laughs> like well it's obsidian he gives you um you need obsidian from volcanic glass essentially um and there 
is one active volcano that you know of on the entire plane that is the home of a very very old and you know this because your family has gotten obsidian from this area um a very very old very interesting red dragon um she has a um she has an arena that she just makes things fight in for fun um just just monsters and she just invites you know she has a tournament that she you know it's a gladiator arena essentially that she does um but you would know that your your family most likely has obsidian i i'll go get it but why couldn't it have been i don't know cloud glass instead of volcano glass i can cloud work with, glass yeah i can work with that yeah i mean technically volcanic ash is in pyroclasmatic clouds that come out of volcanoes so it is technically cloud glass hey nerd <laughs> hey hey you are my <laughs> apprentice okay <laughs> like which makes you a nerd minion and he mm. like points yeah and he like points to you um do you he's like well if you can go get it that is definitely on the list and also there's this other magical goop ingredient that is only found when um the the knot elk regurgitates i don't know if you've ever seen a knot elk they are they're very very large and they got like eyes everywhere everywhere and, yeah. yeah yeah oh you've seen okay well oh I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah 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 at least at least you know Saw one yeah mm-hmm as well as the acidic gullet of a therizinosaurus, like the acid sacs. I could also use those. It's okay. You can just leave us in the tube, you know. We'll get back eventually. <laughs> you don't have to do this. <laughs> Here's your fetch quest. This is the fetch quest part of the JRPG. It's autumn, it's autumn training montage. What are you talking about? Wizard <laughs> training montage. Yes, yes. No, this is the part where you get split up from the rest of your party and you, the leader of the party, have to do all these missions without your party. All I'm going to be so leveled up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah you really I hope you statted the main character of the party. Yeah, you will be. Um, but yeah, and then there's like a moment like Yelish sort of pauses and you know rubs the back of his neck and is like you know when we took these less than an hour ago I didn't think that uh we need them right away mm -hmm. but the world's changing and somehow you got dragged into the center of it kid Sorry about that. Yeah, well. Sorry about your friends. Me too. But the faster I get the stuff, the faster they can come back, right? That is true. Now they'll have all the same memories and everything, right? That's the magic of it, right? Oh, yeah. They, they'll remember uh, to the moment because it's all about, you know, their bodies aren't going to hold on to trauma from from like the that point that we took to the that point like there the physicality of trauma is not gonna take effect but uh no nah, they'll they'll probably remember everything into the moment that they died and beyond even okay well maybe that can help us figure out what's going on here too I plan on talking to my friend once she 
becomes a person again. Right. It takes, it takes a while. I'm uh, interested to hear what happened, to say the least. Same. All right, he rubs his hands together. Let's get to work. And we're going to begin that training montage after I pee. Um, <laughs> like, I hope you read that. So, I just want to explain. Bree is just going to float around in her tube. Yeah. If you, if you had to grow out of Phoenix ashes and cheek swabs from a tube, how would you grow? Are you going to go head first? Are you going you gonna to get the, the nerves and muscles in? Oh, it's gonna be one of those, yeah, like it's nerves first. And it just looks yeah, like spaghetti. I, I want to be a little bee with teeny tiny little arms and legs. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go Watchmen style. So you want to grow into like, huh? I'm gonna go Watchmen style, like Dr. Manhattan style, where it's just horrifyingly like in, like a skeletal system shows up and screams away. Then there's a central nervous system that screams and then goes away. And then there's a vascular system with all the blood and everything goes away. And then I just come back fully and I'm just like, Oh, that sucked. Everything hurt. Everything sucked. I like sucked. legitimately think though, like in a uh, real sense that it'd be really cute if Rowan, if it was just like vines and flowers and it's just like plant matter first and then it becomes fairy. Yes, I love that. That's it. That feels appropriate. I would like only part. one addition made to that description. Mm. Rainbows, flowers just, and vines. Yeah, rainbows everywhere. That tube is sparkling. <laughs> The the tube comes out, looks at everyone else, and is like, "You're wearing that." Mm, yeah, <laughs> mm, that's a choice. When you yeah. break those the colors, tube, don't it's like go a together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all the sparkles get released. Mm -hmm. Snaps, and now whenever you snap, it's just a wall of vines that shows up in different places. Oh shit! I don't know my own strength. Yeah. Well, they did gain a new power, so. <laughs> It'd be fun for them to figure that one out. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we gained the new powers. Mm -hmm. I decided on a soup or a, a, a cauldron and a, a ladle for my yeah. little flying device. Baba Yaga style. Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, theoretically, I can cook children. Yeah. This is what I yeah. come back to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back Physically, you could. Ethically, well, that's, you know. Yeah. So long as they don't eat my house, I think it's fair. That, that's fair. Yeah. You 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 worked hard to build that gingerbread house. Um, Oidum, what challenge do you want to tackle first? I think... I think, man, if I'd just known this, we'd have been able to grab all that stuff on the way out. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I'll go for the dinosaurs first. The dinosaurs first. All right. Um, cut to whoosh, the old nest that y'all had encountered a, a few days ago. Um, there are now hatched babies. Um, sort of chirping away and um, the Therizinosaurus is as a couple uh, as most birds tend to raise their young together um, and you know there's times that you see uh, during your retcon um, you will have like a parent stay with the nest for like a day or two while the other parent goes to hunt and then they will like switch feed their babies um and you know that the male for sure has the um the acid pouches you because you were there like you saw it it, it opened its mouth at you <laughs> like um and the male is the one with both eyes you don't know if the female does or not um, and you don't know if the babies have it. Um, how do you want to approach this? Okay. So we're going to have to break up an animal family. This is just part of nature. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and and this this is like Autumn hyping themselves up for this job because this sucks. Uh, <laughs> Do you want to give these little babies mommy issues or daddy issues for the rest of their lives? Well, I know that the male one has this this spittle pouch, so I definitely oh, yeah. am going for that one. So mom's just gonna have to work double shifts, I guess. You're gonna make her a single mother. You work hard for a the money. Mom yeah. Who <laughs> works two jobs. <laughs> so sorry. I, I will sn- okay, 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 sneak okay. out after the uh the mail after it leaves the nest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and try and give it a good pace away while it's out hunting maybe waiting while it's distracted actually like catching something to spring on it so that way it's multiply distracted it's actually very interesting because you've never seen them hunch before and as you sort of like observe how it gathers food it goes to a certain patch of of the woods that's almost wetland like um and it with its giant um like sword hands um these trees like these almost like cypress like trees that are hanging with the the gray moss it just chops away at the moss and the branches because therizinosauruses are vegetarians <laughs> um, and it's just and it's gathering like different almost like nutritious vegetables um to you know to swallow to put in its bird gullet to to bring back sort of thing but that's does he pull out a wallet and look longingly at photos of his children and absolutely like, wow, I love just right so out much. of like he just lifts up a feather like a giant feather flap like in his chest <laughs> and like takes out the wallet and he looks at his family and it's just like ah oh, don't worry daddy's coming home soon and like, puts it like a, mentions to himself as he's walking man i'm just two days away from retirement <laughs> everything's gonna be great all right uh what do you do how do you take this guy on all right i am going to use as many of my elemental points as possible to summon a giant whirling tornado elemental yes to just body slam pile drive this therizinosaurus into the swamp water until it stops struggling i almost imagine because he's in the swamp and in the water you essentially create a water spout with your wind um kind of in the same vein that like you would make a a dust devil Mm -hmm. um but with with water because you know this isn't coming from like the clouds as a storm like this is coming from you and your magic and your elemental and it surrounds this therizinosaurus go ahead and just roll me an arcana with advantage please to see what goes on and advantage just means you just add another dice to it Oh gosh. So I get to roll two. Oh, seven and an eight. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, and with all three of those spell points, like it actually gets to the point where you both, the way that this tornado is working, this this elemental is taking the breath out of it and at the same time drowning it and it just suffocates and dies eventually falling to the ground um or into the water and you now have the time to excavate its acid glands I will um, be as clean about extracting what I need as possible, and I will just 
say uh, quick words of, uh, I'm so sorry for having to have done this, but it's for my friends and I just hope that this is worth the cost and uh, I will leave the carcass behind for nature to deal with yeah and i mean it, it's in it's in some swamp land so it's gonna in a marsh so it's gonna decay fairly quickly um probably by the time you finish your your mission your your missions um and as you do each one do you um go directly back to yalesh after each um thing after each one or do you keep something on you because this this might rot eventually so you might want to take it back to yalesh yeah so since this was kind of along the way to the tower i feel mm -hmm. like this first one i would have run back yeah and then um I would probably decide to go get the, the stone next. Okay. And then after that's collected, then I'll go look for the not elk because that seems like it might be a little more tricky to find. So um, that's fair. That um, way I have rocks which don't, you know, expire. <laughs> That is true. I mean, yeah, rocks don't expire. <laughs> like, they're they're rocks. They Perishable just... rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and you would know this. Uh, when you so this kind of like incursion of stalking and hunting and planning out this Therizinosaurus, um, going back and forth probably takes you up to like three or four days uh before you're back at the lab. Um Yulesh is working hard. Um, Copper is also assisting him the best he can, but he's not a he's not a wizard apprentice. He doesn't he doesn't uh, deal deal in such things. But he he is doing his best to assist. Um, but looks quite relieved when you're back. Um, oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Good job, kid. Oh, this is the whole sack. I'm gonna have so much left over. It's like Yelesh is ecstatic because oh, good job. And he like pats you on the back. I'm gonna go not hurt myself opening this up. Um you're doing such a good job. Go ahead and add a um a point to one of your stats. Yeah. I'll add it to Arcana. Good job. Um, so you want to go get your stones next, right? Mm -hmm. You know that your sibling, um, Mitchell, is a he does he sort of has taken over what you haven't done um and based on the schedule of the year you know that he would either be in Tarnholm or Ran uh Ran is fairly close to you um, it's the pyramid um, city, the walled in city. Um, it's the city of um, of reptile folk. So you have a lot of, which is why Yulesh is so close, lots of lizard folks, lots of turtle folk, a lot of um, snake folk, naga, the, of the sort. Um, it's sort of where they conjugate um, as a society. Um, you could go there and check, or you could go to Tarnholm, which is where the uh, the Untamed is outpost at. Mm 
I go to Tart Home because I should probably also let everyone know what happened because they sent a contingent on behalf of the untamed mm-hmm. and everybody fucking died. Everybody fucking died. Um, it's up to you if you want him to go with you. The coffer does offer to go to handle the social situation with his children if you need. But it's up um, to you. I, heck, your business is yours. You handle it however you want. I don't necessarily need you to come for me to get the job done. Oh, of course. I, I just, I, I just also, you know, you are quite capable of just taking on this. There's, you know, sources on your own. Um, very impressive. You're a better apprentice than I am. I'm not even an apprentice. I'm a fucking retired. Not from wizarding, from rangering. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, everybody hits their stride. Yeah, I mean, I'm back in my 30s at least. That's nice. Being oh, being in your being close to 60 was fucking weird. Anyway, uh, I I could go with you, but if you're if you just want to get in and out real quick, um, I, I'm just I'm just offering you back up. Mm-hmm. Is all mm-hmm. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Much appreciated, but I think uh, you know, unless you have any business there. I'll just handle it myself. Okay. And there's like almost like a look of relief on his face because he does want to go, but you know, you also notice that that chamber that they put Sai in, it does not look like it's actually been opened for a bit, just based on like the dust and all that other good stuff it's you know she's it's only it hasn't been a week yet the processes are still rekindling hmm. mm-hmm. you make it faster for you he says um while yulesh is busy there's actually a ley line close to tar home oh fancy have you ever used one before? Well, I was going to. Right. Um, so the way that it, it kind of works is that somebody has to use some of their uh, resources, like their magical resources, to either uh, have you or somebody else go through. Um, so, like... You know, so like mechanically, like if you were another, if we were in another uh, system, like you would have to spend like a spell slot to go through it sort of thing or a hit dice. Whereas mm-hmm. like with this, and you know, they're recoverable just like any other resource. Um, you used all of your SP today to get through the Therizinosaurus. Mm-hmm. Would you say that any of our, um, so if you don't want to rest, have you said, have, do you think that any of our themes have um, been, been met? Yeah, this yeah. is super whimsical. <laughs> you murdered that father in cold blood. <laughs> so whimsical. It could have been really romantic. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually... Mean... There was kind of that one moment where he sighed lovingly about his kids. That was, we are that was a that people. was a that was a family guy cut, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> um I would say that you are acting incredibly heroic right now though. So you would get your SP back. Heroically murdered that animal. You're 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 bringing your friends back to back yes. to life. So that is heroic, and you're doing it. And also saying, "I can handle this myself," is also quite heroic. I would even say. So you got, Double. yeah, you got two SP back on you. 
Um, it only takes one to, to get through, so you'll have an extra one to use. Um, but, you know, Copper sort of takes you to the ley line room, and there's one. He goes, it's about a half day hike from Tarnholm towards the east, uh, or excuse me, the west. Um, but you'll end up in the forest, but it'll be close enough. Um, and he um, says these words to you, and they're in a language that is and you heard Saya say something similar before they had walked in and he goes that's the address and you gotta put your magic in there with that address in mind and you will be at that ley line um don't ask me how that works because I don't know I just know it does <laughs> okay mm -hmm. repeat that for me he says it again like a little bit slower it's like it's because he says it out of habit um <laughs> kind of thing he's like it's a nokian it's it's celestial one of those okay the, the voice of god <laughs> things learning a language on the fly i can do it you That's... are incredibly capable i'm so heroic oh my mm -hmm. gosh oh my so god mm-hmm I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it, Ma Luke. <laughs> I'm doing it. I need to swallow this chick this chicky tinder real quick. Oh no, um. Ren solely adopts the Boston accent the more they work. <laughs> oh, it's canon. All wizards are Bostonian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The more arcane magic that flows through your brain, your veins, just uh did you the more you it, hit them long vowel sounds, you know, the more mm -hmm. that they hit different. Did mm -hmm. you know, in fact, that the scout from TF2 was, in fact, the most ancient of wizards? <laughs> <laughs> the force of nature. Um, write that Thomas stamp down because that's quite worthy. Um, so, yeah, you, you do it. And you were whisked into these ley lines are just Yggdrasil's roots that connect not just this world but the worlds the the realms together and it's a fairly short trip because um it's just it's the fast travel mechanic of this world um but as you're sort of there and you're you know like the best way I can describe the way that you're floating around is like is like through the live stream of Final Fantasy VII um, that you see sometimes. Uh, yeah, just whew, it's very JRPG. -y. Um, you kind of get a glimpse because um, the way that these ley lines work, they go through the cosmos, they go through time and space. Um, as you go through this one specifically, you sort of look to the side and you just see this giant entity that has like no face and it's just the stars, but a giant chef hat and it's looking down at its hands and then you see this little pew sort of go off. Um, in, into the cosmos and this thing turns and it looks at you and it gives a wave <laughs> like, I wave um, back hey yeah divine and entity you, yeah and as soon as you wave back like um you are <laughs> thrusted out and you are in the forest um knowing that you you gotta have to like take a minute like it's a little uh woozy um get my footing Catch my breath. Just, just roll, just roll a d8 for me. That's a four. You threw up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my clams. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And you end up in, um, sorry, chewing. Um, you 
get your bearings about you and you begin your journey. Like you said, it's like a half a day's walk um, before you get to Tarnholm. And Tarnholm, it's called Tarnholm because there's a tower um, that's being built. Um, and it seems like it's always being built. Uh, and you know that this is where Raina stays. Um, like one of the levels of the tower is like her main room. Um, and of course she has guest rooms. You know that her husband built this because he's part dragon and he just wants a tower to put all of his shit in. Mm -hmm. um, so as, as a dragon wants, right? Um, but you also know that the merchants are in the town square. Um, and the, st the, the stone merchants are the what you kind of end up seeing while you're looking through the square for your sibling, um, you find him. And he's heading what looks like the building of a a temple. Um the archi that's you know, you recognize that architecture very quickly of like, oh, this is like temple building sort of thing. But there's Mitchell with blueprints in his hand um you know being being the surveyor and directing other folk um into the architecture of this building i will casually walk up and stand next to mitchell and just say um hey looks like this is coming along pretty nicely your 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 brother just kind of like what and like looks at you for a moment and like stares and then his little otter eyes get really 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 watery and he's like what up and like drops his big old scroll of blueprints and just hugs you because uh, you left right. without saying a word okay okay yep hey um where where have you been I've been around and I will like reach over and do like a light tap mm -hmm. on his back and um, just it's it's been it's been a wild time and been a um, wild time yeah I, I made some friends which is great like really great had some adventures, uh, helped the untamed, visited a wizard. Um, Hasn't like let you go yet. It is just like sobbing on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so great. I hate to do it, but I need a favor. And, you know, he pulls away from you and uh, gets out a handkerchief and blows his nose and like goes to wipe his eyes and then realize that's a bad idea with the mm -hmm. same handkerchief that he blew his nose in so he gets out another one and wipes his eyes puts them away and like okay anything like what, what do you need i need a bit of volcanic glass oh yeah i mean uh people are always looking that to make weapons and stuff so i've always got a, a little bit on me how much how much do you need and it's like at that moment that my face come i come to the realization that i didn't verify how much i actually need so i just go um oh, mm. so take the ley line back real quick <laughs> i will say all of it <laughs> I'll look at Mitchell and just say, um, do you have anything already fashioned into a blade? Uh, hold on. And he pulls out like from his bag, like a clipboard because he can't remember if he does, but his inventory does, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, kind of sort of goes through everything. He goes, okay, so I got one, 
I got one bastard sword made out of it. And I've got, what, well, three daggers. I'll shake my head and I'm just thinking, yeah, cult leaders are more likely to want obsidian daggers. So I'll take the bastard sword. All right. Sounds so. Yeah, you, of course you can have my my bastard sword. Um, There's like a pause and like looks and, you know, he tilts its head curiously, his little otter nose um, twitches. He's like, what do you, what do you need it for? You're not in trouble, are you? Like no one's coming after you. So you, you need to slay them. No, no, I need it to make an ingredient for um, magic. So I'm kind of a wizard's apprentice. Surprise. What? That is so cool. Yeah, it kind of happened suddenly. So I'm still kind of getting a feel for how it works but i needed powdered volcanic glass and i figured a blade would be easy to carry and work with um but I we're gonna also, do this i've also to... got a slab you gotta be a wizard you gotta start talking in a boston accent <laughs> Some, sometimes sometimes yeah. i just slip into it oh man that's really oh and it just like there's just like this look of relief on your on your brother's face your sibling's face and it's just like that's a wizard apprentice that is so cool are you are you are you happy that that's about this am i happy yeah. and I mean, that's why you kind of ran away, right? To like find yourself and, and your happiness. I frown. My outer cheeks puff up. And I say, honestly, right now, no. No, I'm not. I lost all of my friends, which is a lot. And. I'm hoping to try and get them back. So what you're doing for me here means an awful lot. And I, I'm sorry I ran off for what it's worth. I, um, um, he shakes his head and puts a little otter hand comforting on your shoulder. And he's like, hey, I got you. And don't worry, I'm not going to tell mom and dad that I saw you. Unless you want me to. Yeah, you can. I'll, uh, I'll come around and visit as soon as my apprenticeship is over. Sounds good. I'm going to, I'm going to be here for a while. I got, you know, I don't know. Looks at the temple and is like, apparently there's going to be a change in you know, Tarnholm commissioned me to build this for worship. So, of some new god. Ooh. So, uh, new, here I am. Yeah. New, new god. Yeah. A new angel needs worship. It apparently. New angel. Do you know what they're called? No, didn't didn't really get into that. Got a couple symbolisms like crows and ravens and things like that something's going on in in ran too um on a on a similar note um one of their eggs hatched up there it's getting a little weird because um uh, as soon as that egg hatched the the, the mages there put up a barrier and no one's going has gone in and out
Yeah. Um, weird stuff is happening. Everywhere. The yeah. The world's changing. I'm just for the better. Just doing my part to make that happen. Look at you. And um, yeah, you are brought to his card of wares and he takes some time but eventually he does find this this bastard sword that's all the way at the bottom so of course like he's got to move like the whole cart um, and all the way at the bottom is the bastard sword made of obsidian and he uh he gives it to you here you go thanks mitchell anytime bottom like I said, I'll be here a while, so you can pay me a visit without talking about dead. No problem. Okay. Cool. I'll do that. Yeah. Just take care of yourself and be careful. You too. And I will turn and go without nary another word. Yep. Maybe a little wave behind as I go, but you know. Yeah, and you uh, bring yourself back with magic. You do another half day's walk, go through the ley line with your sword, and and you're back in Yelesh's, uh his basement because he doesn't have a tower. He's got like it's it is a tower, but it's like upside down, like it's a tower in the ground, <laughs> like kind of thing um that just goes down in a way uh and he's like oh man you're doing real good real good there friend my my worthy apprentice as he calls you like now very excitedly uh take another stat to put into your your new things I'll go with acting because I had to actually talk to somebody. Yeah. And I would say that you had some both whimsical and uneasy moments when going through the ley lines. Whimsical in that it's like, oh, it's the live stream and it's very JRPG. Uneasy because an elder horror waved at you. <laughs> and you waved back. So you got two back once again. Um this didn't take you very long probably took you a total of two days uh to get through so it's now officially uh been about a week and if you want to take a some time off before you go not elk hunting uh you can eat sleep um that kind of stuff and the next day before you set out we get elk elk goop um saya's out and about and she looks better than what you saw her as she's even dressed in um more like loosely fitting fitted clothing sort of like these like harem pants and um like a cropped tank top um still barefoot and hands are wrapped in like mock gauze um but she looks like a person again if that makes sense that's that's good Mm -hmm. looking like a person's good um i will give a Kurt acknowledgement to the fact that she exists mm-hmm. in this space and I'll look at Yelesh and uh, just say as much as I still want to know what happened the faster I get this done the better yeah I've uh, taken some some courtesy out and had uh had my little 
my familiar out there and uh, he's seen he's seen a, a herd of, of not elk um, just about uh, two miles out um, but be careful because they're really close to the the ran barrier um, that has apparently gone up so you should be you should be good here here's the, and he pulls out a map and gives a little x this is where we've seen them at hmm. what's this about a barrier yeah you know about a not long after and he like makes a little motion to Saya. uh not long after sh- she came to uh uh it, it went up around ran Right, right. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, no time like the present, and I will depart again. Yep. Um, you're able to navigate and track where this these herd of of not deer at, um, and they're grazing, um, not deer, not elk. Sorry. Uh, and you see that big one, right? That y'all had seen before. Um, and what are you going to make a roll to search for their regurgitation? I think this is going to be athletics to basically just do some ranger work. Yeah. Looking for the, the throw ups. Mm-hmm. As I uh, will get down on the ground and kind of see if I can backtrack where the herd has been, um, what that distance might be, where they might have nested, just looking for some some places where the herd would have been hanging out. Yeah. Okay, give me a roll. Advantage. Take advantage. Well, it's a good thing we had that advantage because I just Mm -hmm. had a one five and then an eight. All right, well, there you have that eight. You're able to like find it. And it's so very interesting, like this pile of goop, because it it's like an ichor, but there are these bright um, turquoise veins that sort of just um, tunnel around and surround this, um, this patty. Of, of of stuff. Gross. I'm going to collect it to goop. When you put your hand on the goop, you feel something um, course through you. It's kind of tingly, but also it almost, you almost feel like you were magic opens up a little bit hmm. and you get a second element oh boy i can't believe it we'll go with water there, yeah there you go <laughs> um when you bring it back do you what do you do when you go back do you make them a, a time to get close to the barrier to investigate or anything or do you just go straight back i'm just going straight back yeah you go straight back and this takes you about a day to do it's not far it's it wasn't hard it's like probably the easiest thing that you've ever done (laughs) um like just collecting goop um and you return and it is it's time to get to work now It is going to go faster, this process. Um, Y'all have prepared large tubes. But by faster, it means it is going to cut the time down to somewhere between nine months and a year. Still a lot shorter than I was expecting. Yeah. Normally, it can take up to about a year and a half for full cloned body to grow. 
And interesting enough, like all of this is also kind of like being placed in your tube and you can watch your own clone over this process also take shape. Aww. It doesn't have any like it, your 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 essence is within you, but you're having like your own um, your own clone sort of grow. Um, and that would be weird. Sometime around this time, Sai and Copper are going to want to leave. So this is the time you would need to have that conversation before they do that well or they are able to go Mm -hmm. essentially like i kind of imagine that they're on their way out and i just kind of position myself between them and the door with my weapon in hand and i will look pointedly at Saya and say, I've been very busy running some errands, but I think now is about the time you tell me what happened. She gives a nod. Yes. We went through the ley line to Yggdrasil. The angel Raziel had been overtaken by an elder god, an old god by the name of a two. Sunheit. Thank you. Who that's in character. <laughs> Who um scratched Sandalfon's name from my ledger as a target and wrote the name of your friends. into it and I killed them Mm -hmm. he then gathered the ashes of your phoenix friend and gave them to me knowing that I would come back here and then I journeyed through the realm of twilight and I pulled them out they didn't have to come but they all chose to come back so you've done your part to bring them back yes I'm sorry There's a tight grip on the handle of the glaive that kind of eases a little bit. And I suppose I should thank you for that much. And I suppose I should also thank you for letting me know who needs to be taken care of. This a chew. Atu. Atu. Oh. This Atu. Your friend Leah is different from the rest. Mm-hmm. Definitely. She was reborn as a phoenix egg hatched at the top of the pyramid in Ron. And she is being worshipped. And through that worship, the people of Ron have laid eggs. Wait, the people have laid eggs? They're lizard folk, snake folk, Naga. And she, and Copper's like, they're reproducing. Okay, okay. But only within that barrier. For a second there, I thought you meant literally everyone was laying eggs, like regardless, so. Mm -hmm. We think the barrier is there 
to keep Sandofan out because he's not happy. Hmm. He doesn't want it to spread. It seems that she is taken over his domain, at least in one spot. Good. You're going to have to take him out for her light to bless everyone. As she is right now, she's not safe. Got it. And uh, I will kind of get out of the way of the door. And I think this look of quiet resignation to what needs to happen will pass my face. Just a little bit of a frown, furrow of the brows. Just say, gosh, I feel too old for this, but I'm not too old for this. They both kind of chuckle. Um, and it's like, Copper even shakes your hand. Saya doesn't. She doesn't like touching people. Um, but as they leave, she kind of like pauses next to you and she's not that much taller than you even and she's like I don't have to do it ever again now thanks to them I'm grateful well when they come back you can tell them that I won't be here Well, I'll be sure to let them know. Thank you. And she leaves. Sometime later, in this room of clones, as three of them grow, all of them grow, the three of them Raisin, Woen, and Bree. You take your first breath. In your new life. And that is when I think we can go on break. So did any DNA get mixed up like the fly? No, no DNA got mixed up. I, Everyone I'm not was very up being a, a half werewolf, teeny tiny, like little Pomeranian sized werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> like if you really just want to be a werewolf, just get bitten, bro. <laughs> like... Well, no, I was just thinking, it just occurred to me now. I could be teeny and tiny and a werewolf. Little Pomeranian there are, sized. There are burrowers. There are burrowers. Um that are lycanthropes as well but they're tanuki oh my god that is adorable so they're little raccoon dogs yeah so they're were tanuki even uh there is a tribe of were tanuki <laughs> yeah that's uh i don't know if arnica is hanging out um our actual break um but yeah we're good to go on break now i think
Hey y'all, we are back after a training montage with, with Autumn. Um, we are back as our, um, as our, our party, or at least three members of our party. One of them has been awake and alive like this whole time. <laughs> like, just, just kind of like adjusting uh, to being worshipped as, as a god. Um, <laughs> like, um, but the rest of you, uh, Brazen and Rowan and Bree, um, your eyes open as you take this breath. And it's very interesting and weird because you're floating in liquid, but it's kind of like, uh, like, like how you, like, I don't know if anyone's ever seen Evangelion, but like, <laughs> it's kind of like you can breathe in this liquid, um, sort of thing. And the, uh, liquid drains um and your your tube opens and Yelesh and Autumn are there um as y'all are all alive what's going on between the three of you so what what do we remember everything everything so do that, you do you remember any of the process of coming back to life though or is it just you you wow, remember you? you remember being um you remember your uh your 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 twilight dreams like your fever dreams for sure okay mm -hmm. you mean getting you remember the the bird screaming you remember a hand reaching in and pulling you out so we've gone from dream to pure Mm -hmm. So we're like fully formed, right? Like we have all of our fully stuff. formed. Everything you are complete. Mm -hmm. It has taken exactly ten and a half months. Uh, from uh, yeah, you don't know that. No, <laughs> Bree, yeah. Bree and Brazen will see because I don't know if Art will have watched the process happening because what was happening inside mm -hmm. Rounds Tube was probably very interesting because it was mostly just plant matter. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, Rowan uh, looks different and had like probably eyes are bigger than they were and there's like instead of hair it's more like leaf and moss and there's just flowers wrapped around them and they, they're they're not looking uh quite quite the same as they were the last time you saw Rowan well if Brazen knows anything about these tubes is that you gotta bust out of them so it's just <laughs> wham first thing when they wake up <laughs> uh yep and that's how it got messy the last time too because a werewolf woke up and's like i gotta go um i gotta and, get out of here like and like your lush is like oh uh, you don't have to clean that up i if mean isn't that the process the way to get out yeah i mean it drained and it opened <laughs> like but apparently brazen woke up and busted out like before any of that happened <laughs> we went so we're like just process. all chilling naked in our little yard y'all are definitely naked yeah okie dokie mm -hmm. all right so um cooking naked is never really a good idea no. so uh freak really wants to try out her new recipe oh um, wow that's the first gonna, thing do. yeah she's uh she's gonna immediately start asking where clothes are um because she has this great new recipe that she wants everyone to try oh shit we were supposed to get them clothes autumn did you get them clothes <laughs> what? I, no i i was doing what you told me to do that is true well, you know we both forgot to get your clothes but it's all right it's okay this no happens problem. a lot <laughs> and then i just turn into a wolf because they can be naked socially <laughs> Socially, it's all right don't worry about it i got you i got you something just hold on uh as for can't, you can't you just manifest clothes you're a wizard isn't that like your job or something isn't that within your realm can't just of manifest I can't, you can't solve every problem with magic okay all right I mean, imagine standing off the side of of yulash and just when he says you can't solve all problems with magic i'm just like you can. <laughs> it's just okay. choosing not to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lucky for you, there was a there was a there was a yard sale. Okay, from my neighbor, 
the down the down the other wizard that lives in another cave a while ago and luckily they were your size so there's some that there, there's some clothes in one of the bed hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna go get them for you and he just keeps like looking up making sure that he can't he's not looking down at your naked form because i don't know nudity bothers him and he like <laughs> you know and he comes back with some very like you know my neighbor said that he saw some guy in a movie where wearing this stuff so i think it'll fit you and it's just like very like it looks like a costume out of the lord of the rings movie that the hobbits would wear <laughs> it's like here you go here, here nice. you so he's just gonna look at this and be like really this is this is all you have like the cape's kind of cute, but really the pants and the you go buy your own clothes. I I brought you back to life. Okay. I mean, you've been you've you... been you've been dead for almost a year. Okay, and I brought you back to life. Okay. Be a little I still grateful. would like to look fashionable while being. Well, you're gonna life. have to go shopping on your own. Okay, I've been busy. Autumn's been busy. Okay, we didn't have time to go. Copper was busy. We didn't have time. To go and buy uh-huh. your clothes, okay? Uh-huh. All Do you right. guys see what I did with the moon when you when I was up there? No. Up we down. underground. Does it look like I look at the moon? <laughs> like, uh, magic where? people like stars, right? And astronomy. <laughs> he is Yelesh the stargazer, but no. <laughs> like, That's a pretty badass title. This not one's not lie. on brazen then. <laughs> Was not looking at the moon, like, you were, know. Were, were we supposed to have an astronomy course? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, We've been gone a year. Co- yeah, it takes time to grow back. Yeah. You're lucky there was. So wait, Phoenix so if we've been gone a year, does that mean that I'm still the same age now that I was a year ago, or yeah. I'm a year older? Yeah, you're the same age that the DNA was taken from. We're the clone. Yeah. Okay, okay. But it's your essence, it's your soul that's just back in you. Rowan feels a, a strange, uh, uh, you know, those sort of like <coughs> low-level panic attack forming because they've they've mm-hmm. not they've not experienced being born before, and this the whole this whole thing is a lot. And uh, glad that Autumn's still there, doesn't know where Leah is, have just happy to be alive, but like shrinks down to small size and just goes to like uh hide in Bree's hair to have a quiet panic attack. <laughs> It all takes a lot and you're gonna have to, you know, come come to you. I get it. It's fine. We will make sure you are fed. I put bread in the oven already. You can check it if you want, okay? But it's good. I use a lot of butter, he says as he looks at Brie. Um, like it's the only thing I know how to make for myself is bread. So don't in tea. Okay, hey, but did you make the butter properly? I bought the butter. All right. I fine. mean, what do you think the elk goop is? Not. It's not. I was just seeing if you would like. If that would, I was trying to make a joke. I get it. It's not funny. Okay. I can't believe the world is gone without good food for ten months, Bree. Anyway, why well, I got it you all is here? A travesty, <laughs> really. <laughs> it's like anyway why i got you all here and he pulls out more chairs with swabs you know just in case (laughs) get a second one going for you ah ah that's a good girl and he just swipes your 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 mouth i'm still teeny size so it's kind of like deep throat in the swab but you know what you could just fine. you yeah. you could just take nope. a piss in it that works too nope. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you on it i'm sure you gotta go after 10 months in there <laughs> like, i thought we were going in the tube you came out the tube yeah look behind you that tube that you that's broken you came out of it yeah you're gonna I mean, have to pay yeah. for that you know i think she like means more... pissing in it in the tube yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we don't change that water so yeah oh well okay so onward and upward the, everyone <laughs> before the cooking shower whole shower because oh yeah no no no, no. The, the facilities are, are, are down the hall 
It, Bree's going to make a beeline to the, the showers because, yeah, gross. Um, you should, you should really thank you should really thank your friend here though. They uh, they worked really hard on getting you back. Yeah, Rowan won't go for the shower. It might become bigger so that they can be heard a little easier. Um, thank you, Autumn. That must have been very difficult for you. tasks themselves were a little challenging but you know it's a long time losing losing all of you at once like that was yeah it wasn't nice to wasn't nice to watch do we know what's happened to Leah she's gone in ran go like gone gone like what are we it's like a whole situation from from what i've gathered he is basically like a god now oh with worshipers and followers and whole nine yards And as far far as I know, she's on top of a big pyramid somewhere, being deified. So you haven't been able to go and speak to her? Well, those tubes don't take care of themselves. Right. Do we know... If it's still Leah, I know that we're like clones, so we remember like our process. I understand that we remember our stuff. Is it the same for what she went through? I have no idea. Maybe it'll be smaller because our ashes are mixed in. Her, her her ashes were mixed in with us so that we took like a couple inches off her height. She doesn't like if if it's her. Yeah. And she spent the last ten months, unlike Autumn here, who knew we were okay and that we were coming back and our souls and this whole thing is worked out. She mm-hmm. might not know that. True. After her shower, and, and she has snuck off to the, the kitchen to make her, her radishes and has come back with a whole plate of, of, of radishes. It's awesome like, all right, everybody. Radishes. Just, yes, the best radishes in the world. All nice roasted radishes. And she comes back with her comfort food. And she's like, okay, everybody, I have food. And notices everybody's kind of sad. Like, why why are y'all so, so glad? I hope you didn't kick that in an iron pan. I'm having... No, no. Tough that flashbacks. Broke. I, don't, I had to use I what was in the... only have stainless steel, okay? Yeah, like... I, I can only <laughs> use what's what's available, and I only have my iron pan, so it was stainless steel. Okay. Well, I will try one of these cosmic radishes. They have delicious. much French. Mm. Uh, you bite into them, and you feel as if you are just they're so delicious and so ethereal that if you know that if you have more than one you're gonna do the dance you're gonna make a beast with several backs I see. Mm -hmm. I understand. Right. Well, I might take a few and just sneak off. Yeah, to go away and have a shower, and also um try to self soothe myself out of having another panic attack. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) as sort of like all of that is happening, the camera sort of like 
pulls out of the underground tower um, into the sky and pans towards this pyramid that um, has a young juvenile phoenix chick sitting on top of it. Leah, how has the past 10 months been for you here in Ran as you have been reborn, as you have been worshipped, and as your presence has blessed new life on the reptilian folks of Ran? What does that look like? Does she remember the li life she had before? It's sort of, because for you, it's it's different. Um, you're not a clone. This is a truly a rebirth. And you dream of the life before. But as far as you understand for now, is that your life started as a horse running through the cosmos and then being born into this phoenix. Did you get glimpses of your past? I, I think there is. Uh, are there any worshippers who like directly interact with her or is it just sort of worship and reverence like with a distance around your her. um your handmaid in your right hand your cans your caretaker is a is a is a marilith actually um with a she has a very she's quite large um but she has you know four arms and like a naga like body um this um burgundy hair that just flows with kiss by the sun um and she has been and her name is uh natasha and she has been with you since you were born she's the head priestess i i think there's a lot of there's a lot of fear because I think it's it, it's it's the fear of just like unknown when you're first awakening. I imagine like the first cry of life for a kid is a mixture of just like, what are lights? What is existence? What is mm -hmm. feeling? Why is sensation? Why is light? Why is everything? So the first few days, there's, it's probably like loud and terrified, but not wanting to lash out, just like not understanding. Mm -hmm. And then the moment that there is any sense of verbal communication that returns for her. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot of scattered thoughts during the first few months of just trying to recover what it means even to piece together sentences, piece together full thoughts that eventually come back to like the complexity of what she used to have before. But a lot of it just comes down to Natasha. Yes, my child. What do you need of me? Oh, and she sort of reaches over and like touches your head, kind of between your eyes gently. She's like, all we need for you is to exist and bathe us in your light. Your existence is all we will ever need. You don't want anything from me. You don't expect anything but my warmth. Yes, that is all. I think the the form is mostly like bird like. It's it's mm -hmm. the younger like chick bird form. Yeah, a little it's, floofy like yeah. you're, you're <laughs> a little floofy I, I, chick. I, I, yeah, a floofy chick. But yeah. I imagine it the way that like. 
it, if you were doing like sketches of a character and you have the out uh, and like you start with like the outline of what their form is i imagine her existence now is almost a constant outline of fire and light like it's mm -hmm. just permanent now that that's what she is until it really comes under control that's... even remember your time as you're growing um from from a hatchling to a full-fledged phoenix um you remember the first time and it's a uh, two lizard folk that come to you and present to you the first two eggs laid in the city and you understand the significance of this but you don't know why and they want to give their children to you afraid that if they don't no one else will have any what do you say to that what do you do with that thing sort of like wings flap down like sort of like uh, because i'm imagining like the way that like feet are talon there's a little bit more joints to like bend down forward towards them and, and like she just asks very closely to them will this make you happy seeing them born and seeing more born Would bring us more joy than anything. Great one. New life. Is this the future you wish to have with all of what life's responsibilities entail for you? Um the the female lizard folk begins to tear up and she's like, I want nothing more than this. I prayed and prayed for this. We prayed for you. Fear not the night that comes from despair. Fear nothing past this point. Not only a future with the love of more life coming into it. Your life will be warm and wonderful for as long as I can help you with this. Life is with you now. It's not long after this first presentation and this first encounter that Natasha directs her clergy to begin the ritual for this barrier for they know the consequences and it's not that they don't want anyone to share in your light but they don't want to take it from them because off across the ocean there is a stir There is a storm that is coming. And it just edges closer day by day, week by week, month by month. But during those times, you seem almost oblivious to it because you're being presented with gratitude. You're being presented with children to come in essentially they they want to show you their children they are our babies they're a little naga hatchlings and they're a little crocodile hatchlings and lizard folk hatchlings all just there um and they are there to be baptized by your touch in gratitude um you are left with gifts of 
everything that they have in gratitude, whether you accept them or not. <laughs> like, and this all just sort of becomes your life. And it's beautiful and joyous. You're bringing something to people that just makes them happy. And you are happy. And then one day, pieces of you have been woken up somewhere. And you feel the rush of memories and you know why these people are happy because you were trying so hard to stop it before you were snuffed out your memories of your friends dying return but you know that because you remember that they are alive again because of you. Is there a way to contact them? you don't know necessarily um this barrier is sort of meant to keep deities both out and in the city of ron um that storm is awfully awfully close though like you're you finally notice that storm And a name enters your brain and is the name Elijah. I think she speaks the name out loud. See what happens. Natasha is there with you and she uh, sort of managing the gifts that are brought to you and she looks up and is like how do you know its true name whose true name sandalvons before they were God, an angel. Only only those close to the gods know. You were just born. How do you know? His will isn't whole anymore. Not here. Not while I am here. I must be killing you. That's why we have this barrier. can't have you die again. He is coming this way, isn't he? Whatever happens, I want you all to be safe. I want my children to be safe. 
deserve this comfort and safety in the world. Protect you with our lives. I would protect you with my life. I think she actually starts to cry a bit. But it's not of sadness, it's just happiness. The life she knew before was she felt alone, looking and craving connection. I think the scene cuts there. As we are back in the wizard tower, maybe a couple of days after everyone has woken up, you've sort of all taken your time to emotionally and physically recoup but what does that look like for all of y'all in the next couple of days sleeping and eating and sleeping mm -hmm. probably <laughs> just a lot of naps yeah just eating cooking more cooking I'm like one of those old grandmas who gets real anxious and they just decide to cook and feed everybody. That's how they deal with stress, so. I think uh, Rowan is not eating and is instead doing sleeping and crying and sleeping, <laughs> crying and just uh, sequestered away. Also, Brazen is absolutely pestering Autumn for all their new magic skills. Like, what's the coolest thing you can do? Can you make explosions? Can can you read my mind? Can you do explosions? <laughs> I'd be doing probably chores for Elash a little bit, but when Brazen asks about the magic skills, I just say... I learned to manipulate water, and I bet I can guess what's on your mind right now. How do you make water explode? How do you make water explode? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you're thinking of right now. Yeah. You got it! <gasps> you got it! You read my mind! <laughs> it was easy. Whoa. Do you think I could become a wizard apprentice too? Well, uh, I don't know when wizards take on their own apprentices, but I'm sure someone around here would take care of you. Can I be your wizard apprentice apprentice? Maybe. I'll help you do the chores. You. Yeah, yeah, you work a good mop. <laughs> Okay, let's go! Uh, but I would probably also check in on everybody else to make sure they're doing okay, because being reborn is one hell of a thing. I think it'd be quite fun if uh, Autumn walked in on an, on an area where Rowan... Because... Uh, Rowan had been going small when emotional, but maybe when feeling an especially big feeling, just playing into like full on Neverland fairies, a very big feeling means that uh, you walk in and Rowan um, uh, doesn't uh, look like Rowan or Rowan sized anymore. And in fact, they've pretty much filled the entire room. <laughs> and they look like some sort of entity it's a bit strange and it probably is overwhelming to look at the way that any kind of eldritch being is difficult to look at in a true form but you're kind of seeing Rowan in a true form who uh when realizing you walked into the room panics and like shrinks back down to like normal mid-size hey uh, hi uh, that's different yep yep that was, uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not intruding, am I? Uh, no. 
was just, you know, feeling some feelings, working at this whole rebirth thing, and um, that happened. Take it it's not going so well, huh? No. I don't... This is all very overwhelming, and I... It, it's a little difficult, because I think an ex of mine is the reason we all got killed. Um... And then he asked, like, when I was not here, I was with him, and he offered for me to just stay there. It's a whole thing. Were you tempted? Um... Yes and no. I think the logical, emotional side of me, both of them knew that I wanted to come back and I wanted to make sure everyone was okay and I wanted to try and right the wrongs of what happened. But, like, I don't know. I don't know the nature of you and what you are, but I, I am... A being made of chaos and something about that person was just like a, a hit of pure concentrated chaos. I mean, it was kind of intoxicating, I guess. Uh, maybe not in a good way. I don't know. So there was a, an urge to agree to it you know and he <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah um i think he told me a little bit about what i think might be going on um said that you know order kind of had its time it was getting too much too intense everything was too structured and now was the time for chaos so he was told by creation to kill raziel the angel guy i don't know if you heard about that part and then he made her kill us and then, like, apologize to me about it. Like, listen, dude, if you're gonna like order my assassination, then be like, mm, I'm really sorry, I had to turn out that way. Like, fuck you, you know. But um, yeah. sorry, it's a lot. Fucking eldritch gods, man. Listen, it is. It is a lot. And you know what? I think. I think. That we should get some revenge. Ooh. Yeah. Um. Maybe. I don't know if he knew that this was going to happen because I saw him while I was dying. By the way, she, Saya, uh, took Breeze frying pan and turn it into shards and made them rip through my body like I, <laughs> I was like insult to injury for a pay listen yeah um but they scooped up the ashes and was like you know i think this will speed up the process so it's like he knew we were going to be reborn i think he was maybe counting on it god yeah uh you know, god shit. But do you think he's expecting us to come back and kick his ass? I think he might be wanting us to kick someone's ass. I'm like, just I've had like... Mm. I've got nine months of pent-up ass-kicking energy. Okay. 
So nice. there's there's no limit. Okay. You want someone's ass kicked, just point me in the direction. We need to make a list. No more lists. No, are we over here kicking oh. ass? <laughs> no more lists. Yeah, we're again. <laughs> no lists. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, lists are too organized anyway. Now's the time of chaos. We're just going to see someone be like, yo, I don't like the cut of your jib. Ass kicked. You got it. We're embracing chaos, everyone. I We're embracing I, I, chaos. Yeah, Brazen Chaos. That should be your name, Brazen. We should get patches for you. My for name like, is you know, Brazen. Brazen. Brazen Chaos. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a little worried about Leah. Like, where is she? What is she doing? If she's Leah's just probably a new, fine. I, Leah's Leah's yeah. got a good head in her shoulders. Like, well, either it's not yeah, Leah anymore, or it's like someone who has had to mourn us and not know our fate for ten months. At least, oh, I knew we were cooking. Oh, the best I mean, thing we can do is when we got cheek swabbed, so she knows that at least. But we didn't have a clone made at that point. Yeah, but we had a cheek swab, so she knows that. We're not like dead, dead. I not everybody operates with your same level of uh, optimism, though, Brazen. Which is you, you, the one of the most admirable traits about you, by the way. But some people, you know, err on the side of realism. We can go to Ran and we can say hi. Just fix the problem. Sure. But we're not yeah. doing ass You know what? I can turn out pretty big and I've got wings. I could just scoop all y'all up and fly you over if there's some kind of barrier. Do you think it'll let me fly over? You can do that? Yeah, why not? Did you see the size of me? <clears throat> no, no, yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> um, Doesn't be fun. You know, a werewolf riding on the back of a giant fairy? Yeah. That's whimsical as fuck. <laughs> that's really whimsical. <laughs> It's very whimsical. Um, <laughs> as y'all are all kind of like coming to your cells again, and mm. just that, like Brazen's optimism just gets all up in your in your business. Um, mm. The earth begins to tremble, and it's. But it is, it's not the kind of tremble that you would get because the earth is shaking from its crust. It's the type of tremble that would happen um, something large stepped onto it or is moving through it. Betsy? <laughs> uh, oh, she and you know, Yolesh is like, oh, I wish, but I don't think it's Betsy outside. <laughs> like, Who um, else is that big? Maybe your five? big wolves come to play with you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, y'all go outside and y'all are at a like y'all go through the front door this time, not the back door. Um, and the front door actually comes out of the side of a mountain <laughs> Why? Oh. so that you... <laughs> so just that walk off like what yeah do you have yeah. the looney tunes Tunes. effect yeah. where you like look down and the camera just goes <laughs> and y'all can see ran in that distance and that pyramid um in in the center of this of this walled city with this barrier and on top that pyramid you see that the the light of that phoenix that is glowing upon there but that is not what is causing this you look up and you see this mega cyclone one second, i gotta close the door <laughs> an actual cyclone heading for rosie at this moment um, yeah you she is up. the cyclone <laughs> you see this this mega cyclone um like forming um above like this valley um and from like the 
like where this funnel cloud doesn't quite touch you just see trees and giant sunflowers and like just beginning to like sprout and die and sprout and die um in like a rapid succession um until like this being forms and it is looming over the city it looms over the world um as the angel sandalfon has come back to claim what is theirs he is bald head with a dark halo with little flits of flame attached to it there isn't so much a face as there's just this teardrop void um and this white what it's almost like his skin is wrapped in like a, a clothing like a white mesh and it goes all the way down to his arms and forms a cape but he doesn't go like to his legs because he looks like he's wearing like harem pants and he is his his feet are that of a person like like a human being like gi- the the toe is almost is huge it's a very big toe um and he just lands on the ground and it thuds as he is here for this phoenix and you see him ball his fist and slams it into this barrier and it shakes and rattles and hold but holds down in the city leah as you are there you know everyone is panicking as this angel is looming its full self its full madness over you all natasha and her priestesses are expending everything to keep this barrier up what do what is your reaction all of you like both on the mountainside and inside the city what is what's happening i think roman's just gonna lift a hand and go team it's time to go kick some ass <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, one second no. let me go finish putting all my shit into a tupperware so we'll be prepared for the week <laughs> on our journey yeah here's the ass kicking energy i have yeah. meal prep to finish here people yeah, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. important to me we need Yelash the energy, energy own, balls yeah yeah Yelash doesn't own tupperware he just owns like previously used uh country crock tubs um of margarine <laughs> one half dozen of the other same yeah thing. exact same thing and old cool whip containers um and the tin containers are the 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 holiday biscuits <laughs> What's okay up, but yeah. wait important question yeah how many of those like cool whip containers have like salsa or other condiments inside of them they're all of dyed cool red for some reason like there's a redness that has stuck to them <laughs> that's that's unsettling <laughs> yeah i don't know what that is but it's not good it's spaghetti. What else? Would it like? <laughs> It'll just, taste. It's the, the same. Tubs. It's skate fine. Tubs. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Let's go. Kick All your nays is really bloody for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go into to Big Rowan. Uh, and now that I've actually got room, it's probably even bigger than it was inside the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just sort of ready myself so that my friends can either be lifted or carry on, climb on me, whatever you want. Finally, I'm the one that's climbable. Um... <laughs> <laughs> ready that. to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do y'all gather upon climb climb rowan to 
Yep. I've gathered up all my stuff. We're all set to go food-wise. So go. we'll climb on top of Rowan and make ourselves all snug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Leah, from where you are at the top of the pyramid, you feel your own flame drawing closer to you as your friends who are part of you now are coming to aid. What do you say to Natasha? What do you feel? What is... I I think there is... I think there is a moment where she is afraid of like putting her friends in harm's way of seeing her children get hurt. Mm -hmm. But I think it also kind of becomes... It, it's the duality of like your parent is like, my baby is mine. I, I need to make sure they're not hurt and worried about them, but also simultaneously, someone is trying to hurt my baby. I'm about to fucking kill somebody about it. Mm -hmm. Like, you hurt any of them, I'm about to kill you. And I think there's, like, it's less now something she has to actually wield. I think it's just, like, a feather comes off of her, and it's, like, a focus that's floating in front of her is the familiar, like, Phoenix staff, but it's just now a manifestation of her will. And I think she actually calls out to Sandalfon, but instead says, Elijah, I know you're here. You've never been subtle about anything. You will not hurt my children, and I will make you pay for everything you've done to hurt anyone else here in this world. Your domain is mine now. Because you don't know the first thing about what it takes to run it or to care about anyone but yourself. You're going to have to rip your, all of your power out of my corpse if you want it back. This large hand lands on the barrier and these angelic nails spear through them and begins to pull the priestess's hold. The camera sort of pulls out as your friends are getting closer to you. Your Rowan's flying, and y'all see Leah standing there, facing him off. The camera goes just a little bit further. Because it's not just your attention that has been caught, that Sandalfon has shown to. But from maybe a few hundred miles away, in the size of a mountain, a giant snail lifts her head, turns and looks, and there is something very large and uninvited in her territory. And she begins her sluggish moves <laughs> towards Sandalfon. And I think. With that is technically the end of today's session. <laughs> so, yeah. In the cinematic sense, we still have some uh we still have some cleanup to do as far as like your questions go um at the end of session. But yeah, what is um I need to know everyone's mindset and where they're at and how their characters are feeling. Um, and we'll start with with Bree. We'll go in the opposite direction. So we'll start with Bree. Bree. Okie dokie. So Bree's mind at um Bree's a wee bit stressed, uh, still over the 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 iron pan thing um with with Rowan. Um mm -hmm. she's happy she's gotten all of her her cooking done um so that everybody can have all of their nice nummy foods for the journey ahead so we can kick sandal ass um and then um 
yeah, she's just eager for the journey to go save or help, I guess, her friend. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't really need saving, per se. Right. Autumn. It's been a long 10 months, say that much. Um, I think there is a very large sense of relief at the fact that everyone is back in one piece from the, the cloning vats. And I think there's a sense of urgency and worry about Leah because, yeah, I never really went and checked. And that's kind of not great of me. Um, <laughs> to be fair, there was a barrier and you couldn't really get mm -hmm. through it. <laughs> like... But uh, I feel a little guilty about that, but definitely want to go kick some ass and save our friend and get a little revenge because dang it people deserve it oh yeah leah um she never had this experience but i feel like it's somewhere in the range that this feels the most appropriate description she's somewhere in the range of like child protection services is coming for her children like that's that's how terrible Sandalfon feels to to me. It's just like, yeah, yeah, I already I've been doing this for a while. I know the right regulations. How to do something. I'm like, sir, you threw a fit because you couldn't get laid. Like you literally are the worst person to for to watch over the domain of life. You get pissy about one person like not putting out eight thousand other people. You're literally a deity. You you could literally find other people. A deity that was once a human, so or immortal. Mm -hmm. Even worse, mm -hmm. even more petty. Mm -hmm. So she's she's somewhere between very pissed, and I will say though, there is a smidge of like a curious look on her face, knowing that Rowan is coming. Because I think <laughs> there there is like a very quiet whispering of like, I think when she first awoke with the memories of the others being here, I think she uttered the word beloved, but she doesn't know why she said it. And now Rowan coming, she says it again, and she still doesn't quite understand why she said it. So I think that's where she's at. Pissed off mom, and also <laughs> crush is coming? How romantic. <laughs> um... They're giant now too, it's even better. Y'all are almost the them. same size. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are large. Uh, Rowan, how you feeling? Oh, God. So many feelings. Um, Rowan is overwhelmed and um, feeling uh, guilty that somehow, although it's not necessarily their fault, uh, an ex was had a heavy hand in what has happened. Um, and uh, is feeling reassured that they did the right thing by agreeing to come away from said person and and stick with friends. Um, is worried about uh Leah not just in terms of you know there's a giant fuck off angel trying to break past that barrier and, and hurting her. But also the worry that um, there's a strong chance that that this is not the same Leah and that she's not going to remember them. Um, and Rowan hasn't ever been the sort to like deal with the whole feelings thing before. They're just a let's fuck around and find out kind of being. Um, so to have had someone talk at actual feelings and then the risk that that is no longer going to be a thing if Leah doesn't remember that's playing on their mind but right now it's just let's go fuck them up fam yeah Raisin how you feeling head empty kicking ass mainly um, mm -hmm. but also is very optimistic that Leah is still the Leah they know and is just going to kick ass to get her back you know 
like yeah there's no doubt in brazen's mind that we're getting the gang back together you know uh yeah i think they're excited to be alive again because now they're like yeah there was other things than just running in a circle forever (laughs) wasn't there whoa there's food there's wizard apprentice (laughs) um and that's 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 brazen's whole thing is like yeah let's let's go get life by the horns again i guess yeah Oh, awesome. Artica, yes. I'm imagining Brazen on the back of the ferry making dogs. Someone, yeah, like, uh... <laughs> someone needs to draw that. <laughs> <laughs> Just on the top of this giant fuck off ferry. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Incredible immaculate. All right. Uh, I think with that, um, Angie, we have a giveaway to see um and some announcements and then we will go ahead and sign off eh i have done the drawing and apparently no one has entered this time around so that's <gasps> no one has things. entered yeah. the sadness all of you shame you have all known shame were i in possession of a bell right now i would be ringing it with great ferocity and enthusiasm however i am not in possession of that so therefore i'll point at you and say shame shame also for those of you who cared here at bad girls anyways shame all right everyone as far as announcements goes i do believe uh on monday we still have our um our lord of the rings 5e campaign not 5e the the transition going on um happening um on wednesdays we have roll for luck here on girls run these worlds as well and you can see us see us back here for our finale on 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 friday and i promise that uh there should we should have we'll have like a playlist listed on spotify and you could just go listen to it uh with all of our songs on it <laughs> for for this finale everyone gets a theme song um sort of thing um as far as me what am i doing where you can find me uh, i'm valdranth i'm pretty much everywhere on the internet the one the new threads i am valdranth ttrpg over on there uh not too active on there yet just because there's no desktop version so it's a little hard for me to interact with uh purely through the phone but i'm working i'm working my way through that um I'm on hiatus from my own channel sort of thing. Like I'm not doing any productions with the exception of Extra Life, uh, which we'll be having the first weekend of September. We're doing a Extra Life uh, marathon to raise money for a local children's network. Um, If you're in my Discord, we already started casting, but on Monday, I will be sharing the casting here on Girls Run These Worlds. Um, And uh so to see if we can get some some more slots filled up we have a very very fun lineup i'm very excited um and i would love to have people uh come in and play with us and raise some money for a good cause um and then uh, and then every other sunday you can find me over on sword and key um i will be uh not this not this sunday but next sunday will be uh some more brindlewood bay so that's me and that's what i do uh and everyone else you know we'll just go down the line so gas gear up uh where can we find you hello my name is gaskinator and currently at the moment i'm pre-recording a bunch of stuff for girls from these worlds so i recorded something yesterday with our lovely producer arnica who's also producing for us today thank you shout out to arnica beautiful arnica's the best arnica's the best um uh and then um on this sunday i'm at a session zero for another pre-recording thing so i don't know how much i can share but stay tuned guys we're girls in these worlds is doing some pre-recording stuff and it's gonna be cool there's gonna be editing (laughs) and (laughs) there's gonna be amazing Mm -hmm uh hi i'm emma hummaloo on the internet you can find me hummaloo on all socials um uh you will see me here 
uh, next Friday for the finale of this beautiful season with these wonderful people. Uh, you will also see me on this channel next Thursday for the premiere of Alien Season 2, Destroyer of Worlds. Um, so, I'm so beyond excited for that. Um, and if you haven't, you should go to YouTube to watch the first season because it was incredible. Uh, we were just speaking about Arnica. She was dope as hell in that game. Um, and uh, you will see me on Val's channel for Extra Life where I am playing in one of the games and then running a game. We're going to be running some Mass Effect shenanigans for me. So yeah, uh, that's that. That's me. Angie, you're up. Hello there, lovely beans. Uh, my name is Angela Lemos Mogrejo. I use she, her pronouns, and I've been playing your now reborn deity of life. Uh, suck it, nerd Elijah. Uh, but also, <laughs> I've always wanted to be able to say that, and actually, it's true. And it's true, therefore, ha. But um, I am actually going to be on as part of Val's uh, Extra Life group, I believe. Maybe Val yeah. actually might have signed up for my game. Now that I, I think did. About I did it. sign up yes. for your game. I'll I want to be a monster flirting. Of course I do. Yes. <laughs> like... Yes. I saw this and I saw you on there. I was like, oh, Val's joining. Uh, of course Val's joining. I really but want to I'm, play in that one. I'm, I'm running so. Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites, which is basically, hey, do you want to go to a bar? Do you want to be in a cafe or a club and just be a literal monster and flirt with other monsters? It's kind of like monster prom, but you can set it in different other in like different locales. We'll figure out what it, our spot's going to be, but I'm really excited to run it as I've only run it one time. And the one time I ran it, it was body. It also was the originating, it was the place where I originated the phrase top initiative, which is still one of my better phrases I've ever come up with. And any one shot I've ever run. So that, and also I believe it's the penultimate session of my the Print Weaver campaign that I'm in over on Neon Lights role play, uh, Pillars of Ink is happening. My reborn amnesiac gal has, she's found her wife. She's got her giant broadsword back that has fire and lightning on it and it's great. And I'm living my best Dark Souls life over here, folks. I'm real happy right now and this, I'm going to be sad that this series is going to end next week. I'll be sad. But that's me. Cool. Hi, that would be me next. Uh, my name is Ren. I am an agender variety streamer, tabletop role-playing game player, podcaster, and audiologist, I guess. Um, you can hear me on the podcast Roads Uncharted. That is the first ever longest-running Genesis TTRPG AP podcast. Uh, I am also the audio editor for that as well. So give that a listen on any of your favorite platforms where podcasts can be found. You can also check me out on my own Twitch channel. We'll be having another episode of Star Trek Ancillary Task Force, which is happening at 1 p.m. Uh, that's over on twitch.tv slash thorny dryad. We are playing Star Trek Adventures, me and a wonderful cast and crew. So join the USS Marathon as we go into our second episode this Sunday. Um, I think that's all I've got. So thanks. Okie dokie. So I'm Fairy Zarina. You can find me like everywhere on the internet as Fairy Zarina, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. Um, later tonight, um, at about 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm going to be playing some Dead by Daylight on Twitch. If you want to drop by, that's cool. Um, otherwise, you can find out what I do on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. So. Okay. Well, that's us. Thanks for coming and showing up. Uh, we'll see you next week for finale. We gonna, we're going to fight God. <laughs> best the, the best traditional and most traditional rpg ending ever it's gotta so fight good god. gotta fight god let's go bye everyone <laughs>